I live about 50 miles from here, and I have to get up early to get down here for an 8 or 9 o'clock meeting. And so when I leave the uh, farm at, uh, at 6.20 in the morning, I have to be able to uh, put my clothing on quickly. And so in each of my suits are the essentials. I carry a constitution in, in one of my pockets, and I carry, carry pens and paper and so forth. And the pen I pulled out to write my notes with this, this morning says, Hub Zone Contracting, It's Good for America. And that just happens to be the pen that's in this suit. There's a different pens in, in different suits. It was Hub Zone Contracting is indeed good for America. And I notice that, uh, uh, that uh, there's sort of under attack now by, uh, by this committee. The first Hub Zone contract in the whole United States was in my district. Uh, I have a number of Hub Zone contractors in my district. I have whole county, which is a Hub Zone. And um, a hub zone business has started there, which em is employing people that at three and four times the mean salary, the average salary in that district. The, all of our other programs, of which I'm very supportive, help people. The hub zone program helps not only people, it helps whole areas because we really are upgrading uh, th these areas when these hub zones move in. I know that there are some problems in in uh, certifying that they are, in fact, hub zones. There are two ways that we could make sure that, uh, that, that, that nobody is cheating. One way is to do what uh, some are suggesting, that, that to have you certify all of these companies and do recertifications. Since there are very many of those, that would be enormously expensive, would it not? Uh, it would be very expensive. And we'd have to increase your staff. Let me ask you, what's wrong with peer surveillance? The people who are most, most interested that nobody cheats is the other guy who submitted a proposal and didn't get it because the cheater got it. Shouldn't we encourage them to report that? And what's wrong with that as a way of monitoring this? Uh, I don't think there's uh, anything wrong with that. In fact, we get hundreds of, of uh, cases a year filed through that mechanism. Would that not be the... Uh, the cheapest, most effective way to make sure that uh, only legitimate firms uh, uh, get these contracts? Uh, it's a very efficient way to do it because you have people that are familiar with the other firms, familiar with the contract specifically, and uh, it, it, it then uh, results in our specifically following up on a concern. Would, would the gentleman yield? I'd be happy to. Two things. The program is not under attack. Fraud is under attack. Two things. In terms of protests and self-policing, that could be done. The problem is we have 14,000 companies, only 20 or 25 protests to this day. Yield back. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Well, we ought to encourage them to protest. Uh, protesting should not be a stigma. Uh, uh, you know, if there's something wrong, why, why we should encourage them to protest. I came here as one of maybe, I don't know, 35 or so people in the Congress who belonged to NFIB before I came here. I was, among other things, in a former life, a small business person. I have a lot of small businesses in, in my district, and I have a lot of protests in my district. So I'm very familiar with those. They come to our office, and we try to mediate a, a, a number of, uh, of those things. Is this one of our newest programs? Uh, it is one of the newer programs. It's, it, it, uh, was, it's about 10 years old, so it's not brand new. Uh, are there not uh, growing pains with most of these new programs? Uh, there are uh, uh, growing pains with, with new programs, and I think we have a long way to go to improve the effectiveness of this program, and I think a lot of it's in our sites. Well, I'm glad to hear the... Uh, Chairwoman state that hub zones are not under attack, uh, that what's under attack is fraud, and uh, of course uh, there's nobody who is more interested in making sure there's no fraud in the hub zone programs than the legitimate contractors in that program, right? That's right, and I think it's important to understand that when you look at the statistics of firms that have not recertified or not completed the work on examinations, uh, many of these firms are no longer in business, uh, specifically the ones uh, in, uh, during the IG review. Uh, many of these firms, uh, one of the biggest concerns I have is when you look at the firms that are coded as hub zone, somewhat around 10% of them, of the contract value, 
was gotten through set-asides. Most of them either came in through a different program or they were small businesses who wanted in a small business competition. So the federal agencies actually are not using the program as actively to uh, uh, bring in hub zone firms specifically. And as a result, when we go out there to do a recertification or do an examination, uh, a lot of these firms don't even bother sending us the paperwork because they're not seeing the benefit from that aspect of the program. So I think we actually have to get out there and encourage usage of the program more because I think that's what's going to uh, make it viable. Oh, thank you very much. They've been very effective in my district, and uh, most of our government agencies are falling far, far short of the goal, and, and we appreciate your attention to this.